जय श्री राधे श्री बड़ भादी श्री की जय हो जय श्री कृष्ण पार्ट फोर ऑफ द स्टोरी ऑफ कृष्ण दास वार्ता एटी फोर ऑफ द एटी फोर वैष्णव स्टोरीज वन डे सूरदास टोल्ड सूरदास जी टोल्ड कृष्ण दास दट ही सोट सम ऑफ हिज कम्पोजिशन वर टू क्लोज टू हिज Krishnadas replied that from then on he would pay attention to this and make sure they were completely original with no tinge of Sri Sudarshan's works in them. Krishnadas sat down to contemplate and focused his mind in deep thought on how to compose something on which Sudarshan had not yet touched. However, whatever pastime he thought of, he realized that Sudarshan had already written about it. He had covered all the subjects like Sri Takuji's demanding taxes, Dan, stubbornness in love, Man, and all about the Lord's cows and his play with them. He thought and thought until he could think no more. Nothing came to him. He began to worry and sat like this for hours. Eventually, he took down the pen and paper, went to have his Mahaprasad. Sri Govardhanadara came there and wrote the following: Pad Rad Gori. The lad Krishna is coming home from the forest with his cowherd boyfriends, his hair all covered in dust from the hooves of the Nechuki cows. His eyebrows are like Cupid's bow, his sidelong glances are the arrows released therefrom, and his head is adorned with a peacock crown with feathers from excitedly dancing peacocks. Seeing his beautiful visage like the full moon rising, the freshly youthful cowherd maidens are delighted like lines of bu- blooming lotuses. The redness of his lips puts to shame the ripe bimba fruit and when he smiles his teeth appear like jasmine buds. <coughs> he is wearing earrings, a lovely forehead mark and a bejeweled nose stud. Round his he- neck with three threads hangs the coat of the jewel. On his chest is a necklace with fight with a line of diamonds set in gold and in the middle of these shine bright white strings of pearls. His wrists are decorated with bangles and his long arms adorned with studded armbands. He has rings on his tender fingers and his nails are also decorated. The sounds emitted by his little flutes enchant the whole world and tie up the gopi's minds with the bonds of love. His belt bears little bells. His navel is studded with a diamond and the curly hair that lines his lotus face is like a line of black bees. Sometimes he walks, sometimes runs His pace is for the benefit of those devotees who that he knows to be dear. His cheeks are beautifully decorated by the drops of his sweat. His ah uh, garments are of pale yellow and as he walks his anklets sing out. The poet Krishna Das now describes how Sri Krishna, upholder of the Sri Giridharj mountain, moon-like nails remove the darkness of the heart. Part 4 continued. After writing the beginning lines of this pud the lord left Sordas had never written about the nechuki cows those who have just given birth for the first time they are very very affectionate to their newborn calves do do not like to go out with the cowherd lads because they want to run back over and over again to see their babies here it is written that Sri Takuji was surrounded by such cows and that the dust from their hooves is in his hair Sri Takuji had come and written the first couple of lines of this poem on the paper and after that Krishna Das came and completed it after he had taken his prasad. Krishna Das was extremely happy with this poem and went to see Suradas ji laughing all the way. Suradas ji remarked that he seemed to be in a very good mood and asked if he had written something new. Krishna Das replied that yes, today he had written something with no tinge of any of Suradas ji's poems in it and that it was about a new subject. Suradas ji asked him to read it out loud to him. Krishna Das read out the first line and Suradas ji straight away interjected, "I wanted to have a challenge with you, not with your father. This is not your own composition." It is true that I have never sung of Nechiki cows but it must be the Lord himself who gave you that line the rest of it is a description of the Lord's appearance and I have written thousands of such poems you wrote these lines so complete the pudder hearing these words of Suradas Krishna Das was silenced here the doubt arises that if Krishna Das is Lalita Sri Lalita ji and she gave Govardhan ji favors Krishna Das by writing some of the pudder himself then why did Krishna Das not win the challenge The explanation is that Krishna Das is Sri Lalita ji manifested. Sur Das is Champakalata ji. Champakalata ji. 
There is a difference in their eligibility. In the Leela, Sri Lalitaji's seva is superior. Here also, Krishna Das's mode of seva is also superior, for he is in charge of all the temple employees, all the temple affairs, and the collection of supplies. Krishna Das is most adept in all of these matters. An expert tailor or goldsmith cannot do each other's work. Everyone is clever in their own way in the seva. Sri Swamiji loves both these sakis, and therefore so. So does Srinachi. However, there was a tinge of egotistical attitude in Krishna Das's mind, and therefore he was found inferior. In this way, Krishna Das was thoroughly graced by Sri Acharyaji. Part 5. One day there arose the need for some supplies for the Lord's temple, and so Krishna Das rode on a chariot to Agra to fetch them. He went into the market, and there he saw a prostitute teaching her daughter how to dance. The girl was about twelve years old and very, very lovely. She could sing beautifully and was most skilled in both dance and singing. The prostitute was singing in various musical styles suitable to her trade. When the girl's voice entered Krishna Das's ears, he was infatuated with her. He stopped his chariot there and then and got down. When the crowd parted and he saw her, he was enthralled. Bhav Prakash The question here arises that Krishna Das was the accomplished disciple of Sri Acharyaji, so how on earth did he become so enchanted by a prostitute's voice? He was already infatuated by Sri Takuji, and Sri Takuji's beauty defeats all other beauties. Sri Acharyaji had also written in his Jalabhed treatise, Differences in Waters, singers who are infatuated with prostitutes and intoxicated are like water in stagnant pits. Those who sing only for money are like gutter water. They are very defiled. Song of bards, low-caste body rakers and other lowly beings is like water in a pig's gutter. Those who drink the mood of their singing might as well bathe in and drink that gutter water. Sri Acharyaji has taught these principles. Krishna Das is a person always guided by the knowledge of such supreme law. So why did he enjoy this prostitute's song so very much? If one looks at his behaviour from the outside, then one might judge that he had turned away from the Lord. He had, however, appeared to lift up others by his example. Again, it is said, why was he so engaged in her song? In revelation of the true reason, it is now told that this prostitute's daughter is a divine soul related to the eternal Leela, where she is a Saki of Sri Lalitaji, named Bahubhashini. One day, Sri Lalitaji was preparing some offerings for Sri Takuji and she asked Bahu Bhashni to powder some sugar candy and bring it back when done. Bahu Bhashni took the whole container of sugar candy. When she was talking to another Saki, some saliva fell from her mouth into that pot of sugar candy. She was not aware of this. When she took the pot back to Sri Lalitaji, that extremely perceptive Saki realised what had happened. She told Bhashni that the whole pot had now been polluted by the drop of spit from her mouth. Must be the Lord's wish, she commented. Bahu Bhashni argued with Lalitaji that it could not have been possible for her to spit her spit to fall in there. Anyway, she said, Sri Takuji eats all the food that has touched the Sakas, his Sakas' mouths. Lalitaji retorted. What would you know of the Lord's leaders? If the Lord so pleases, he can do however he wishes and whatever Bennett befits. So if you do something stupid because you feel like it, then that is very low behaviour and you may be reborn into despicable circumstances. Bahubashni then replied, you should also take birth in a low caste family. But then you come and uplift me. How can I go anywhere without you? They thus cursed each other. Krishna Das was born into, in, as a labouring caste member and Bahubhashni was born into the life of a prostitute's daughter. But she never even looked at the face of a worldly man. Sri Govardhanadara had sent back Krishna Das to Agra in order for him to accept her back into the path. This is why Krishna Das was so attracted to the prostitute's singing and found it good to listen to. Part 5 continued. He stood there and continued to listen to the dancing and singing all the time, thinking of the prost- that the prostitute girl would make a fine, a first-class offering to the Lord, since she was a divine soul, and that he would like his Lord Goshi Govind and Nachi to accept her into the path. Krishna Das gave her ten rupees and instructed her to come to his camp that night. Having said this, Krishna Das set up camp in the usual place outside the Lord's temple. He finished off his business of buying supplies for Jatipura and had them packed ready to transport. An hour or so into the evening, <coughs> the prostitute came there with her party and she performed her dancing and singing there. Krishna Das was very pleased and gave her a hundred rupees. He praised her beauty, singing and dancing to her face. He told her that he would be setting off to go to the Sri Giridaj mountain the next morning, where his rich employer lived. He invited her to go with him, and she said 
that she that was what she wanted anyway. She was very happy and thought that if he would give no so much money, then what to speak of how much his employer would be able to give. She went home and prepared all the items she would need and packed them onto her cart. In the morning she came over to Krishna Das, who took with her took her with him to Mathura. They stayed there the night, and the next day they set off for Jetipura, where they reached by the middle of the day. He asked her to bathe and gave her some new clothes to wear. Krishna Das asked her to sing in her musical style for Sri Govindanachi to hear, and he decided to teach her one of his poems and told her to sing it in the Purvi Rag. My mind has attached itself to Sri Krishna's beauteous form, which is immovably stuck on his lovely body, curved in three places. His colour is blue like a rain-filled cloud. My heart and mind will now never budge from there. Krishna Das now surrenders his body, world and head to his beloved Lord. Part 5 continued. Krishna Das taught her this song after the evening, af- after the afternoon service of Uttapan. He then took her along with her accompanying group up to the temple on the mountain. Bhav Prakash he took her up after the Utapan service because at this time Sri Takaji is waking up in his forest bower abode. It is then that he needs to receive offerings soon after he wakes up. At the time of the bogus period of service that follows it, the Lord goes back to Sri Brindavan and walks the path towards Raja on which he meets and accepts many devotees as his own. Krishna Das wanted the Lord to accept this girl and so he brought her up there on Sri Giriraji at this very time. Part 5 continued. The doors to the Bhoga period of holy sight opened. The girl danced and began to sing. She sang the poem that Krishna Das had taught her, and as she completed the song and came to the last line where Krishna Das had written that he offered up his very life, that is when the girl died and her divine body entered the eternal Leela. All the onlookers and her mother started to cry. We have been living on her earnings. How now? What shall we do? Krishna Das made them all come down the mountain and then he spoke to them. Whatever was to happen has happened. She only had only so many years destined to live here on this earth, he explained. What can anyone do about this? Please now tell me how much money you need. They asked him to give them 1,000 rupees to tide them over for some time. After that, whatever will be, will be, they reasoned. Krishna Das gave them this money and sent them on their way. In this way, the prostitute's daughter was accepted by Sri Govardhanaji back into the Leela through the intercession of Krishna Das. We conclude our reading for today and we'll continue tomorrow with the Bhav Prakash. Shivala Bhadish Kijay Ashkyananda Kijay Ho Jay Jay Shri Radhe.